Welcome to the Aftermarket Report, Sunday's edition. Today's date, March 31, 2019, and tomorrow is April Fool's. And I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. <laughs> well, don't buy the market. Um, welcome, everyone. It's a Sunday, and already I can't believe we're wrapping up the month, and we are going to be heading right into Monday tomorrow. So already the time is just flying by. So I hope everyone had a good trading week or as best as you can. Um, the markets have been a little bit tougher to trade. Not to say there has not been some opportunities to trade green. But yes, definitely there has been some. Uh, it's been a little harder, I think, for some people to trade. And um, that's why you just have to, you know, position size or sometimes, you know what, some people are just not trading right now. And preservation of capital is so important. So, um I just want to mention that the jobs report will be coming out this week and also we have earnings coming out for constellation brands this week so uh we'll see what's happening in the markets and uh, i guess uh we'll go from there and i mean every day is a new day so we'll just take it and play it as it comes whatever the market presents to us is how we plan to trade the market so we're going to just go through the watch list for today it's a little bit longer than usual but you know we haven't done a market for uh, about a week and so we just need to catch up now we're back on track so we're going to talk about mu acb aezs or aezs as jim says uh bdsi infu qtna and of course last but not least we'll talk about s-o-l-y and i might even actually talk about lift at the very end because they recently ipo'd and everybody was so hyped up about that and uh we have a few thoughts on on lift um so let's just get started then i guess we'll talk about mu so mu what is this all about well this one here is for micron and um this is micron technology they're in the semiconductors business you know we've talked about micron before and you know what this is a long time believe it or not, was a stock that was in the $60 range. So the fact that it's actually pulled back significantly then to now is uh, showing some, you know, that now is probably a good buy for the stock. And, um, you know, the semiconductors uh, rain, uh, industry, I notice is actually getting pretty strong and has started to pick up. So Micron is one that's definitely one to watch. It had a nice gap up. Um, almost of $2 uh, the other day. So that's a nice little move on a stock like that. And uh, I'm just going to turn it right over to Jim to just talk to us about what you're seeing on this chart because uh, we're seeing a lot of really good patterns here. So, yep. Jim, right over to you. Sure enough. MU had a, had a one-year high of 64.66. And during the uh, trade war last year, we kind of pulled back to about that end of the month of December and then she's bounced up ever since. Hit a little resistance level, a double top here at $43.97, $44. And up, um, we've had a pullback on this one year chart. These are my moving averages the 50, we got the 20, and the 100, and the 200. So right now we've got the 20 and the, and the 50 squeezing up tight. We had a five day sell off here last week. Uh, a lot of these chip makers had a little bitty downgrade and and I have a five-day rule where I think it'll start to turn around on that five-day rule. So if I pull up the 20-day chart, that's a one hour, you see a head and shoulders pattern. We had a high up here at $42, and then she pulled back to my support level, which is the neckline right here at 3902. And then we kind of consolidated for two days, and then we had the breakout a uh, little started pertinent much after hours, and then went into Monday morning, ran all the way up, found a little resistance right here at 44.92 and then started bouncing up and we got that triple top high here after hours at 41.49 and it rested at 41.45 so I'm going to pull up three day one day one minute these are going to be my little support levels that I'm looking at if it's going to pull back it'll pull back to this 40.92 area 40.92 or maybe right down here to this 40.63 with a low support channel of between 40 and 4024 and I am 
I'm going to be bullish on this next week because we are having the rise of the head and shoulder pattern. And then we have the ascending triangle that's moved up with a triple top right here at the 4152 level. And that's the resistance we got to break is going to be right around 41. I'm going to say 4148 is my resistance. If it doesn't want to break that, we're going to pull back to the first support at 4092. And I have three other ones and the second one's at 4063 and 4024 but I'm going to be bullish into this trade into next week now I'm going to pull up that one year chart 20 20 day one more time and we have resistances that we got to hit if we do break that 4148 and that's going to be we do have the 20 day moving up on the 20 day one hour which is a good sign and if we can get these two moving averages above the 100 and the uh and the 200, that's going to be another good sign. So we're going to bring this up to $42 will be my first, re well, right around $41.75 will be my first little resistance. $42, and then we need to get up here into this catalyst up here right around $42.43. I'm going to be looking at options if this thing pulls back to a strike price of $44. And that's going to be MU. And the next one we're going to talk about is a very popular and growing cannabis stock, and that's going to be ACB, Miss Vegas. Yeah, so, you know, ACB, you know, you guys know this company's into the marijuana sector, and um, they're a wholly owned subsidiary of Canimed Therapeutics, and uh, they're located out in Alberta. You also heard that uh, I did talk about uh, the newest addition to their board, Nelson Peltz. Uh, I'm really excited about his addition to the board because I just love his story. I love the fact that he was in the family business and uh, turned it around with his brother and they went to make this, you know, became self-made billionaires and they invest, you know, as they grew their family business, they got into the frozen food sector and then they got into all kinds of other uh, company. They got into Kraft Heinz. I mean, this just, just an amazing, I mean, I just love these stories. It's just so um, inspiring. Um, and I just love uh, the fact that he's joined the board because he's going to be looking at strategic alliances, which looks to me that his focus will be working on additional partnerships. Now, this company I did mention is in Alberta and they have over 500,000 kilos per um, annually and sales operations in 24 countries. And they are one of the lar world's largest cannabis companies. And, um, you know, they are very different from some of their peers because they have also not only a production strategy, but they also have uh, facilities that integrate leading edge technologies. And they have a lot of automation and customization, which allows them to do massive scale production of high quality cannabis products at a very low cost. So um, that's going to, you know, that's really, you know, good for the company. Um, the other thing, too, I do want to mention is that they did have some news. And, I, Jim, I sent you the article there um, that they had some news a couple of days ago that they are going to help Canadian medical cannabis patients receive reimbursement under the drug benefits plan. So what they're going to be doing is they've added product information numbers, what they call a PIN, to 78 medical cannabis products so that they could track the insurance coverage for Canadian patients. So the products that get the pin will include, you know, dry flowers, soft gels and oils and some topicals. And what the pins will do, it will help employers and insurance companies classify and incorporate these health products into the benefits plan. So I think that's really interesting that a lot of insurance companies are going to probably cover some of these uh, products. And then, you know, patients that have a claim to make, they can now know quickly which ones are covered under the plan. And, uh, you know, Med Relief also, which is part of ACB, is also introducing 57 pins to their cannabis product line. So there's a lot going on. It's really to help uh, the insurance companies, employers, and obviously the person that's making the claim, the insurer, uh, to make sure that they get reimbursed for these uh, products, which is uh, a way to help enhance patient access so aside from all that uh i do like the fact or our cannabis for a long-term hold for me personally um i like you know where the direction of the stock can go longer term so i'm not looking here to you know sell the stock at any time soon 
Uh, I'm looking to hold this at least until next year, 2020. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim, though, because I think ACB is looking stronger again. And uh, let's talk about that chart. No, oh, yeah. I was going through the website and showing the different kind of pot that they do, or medical marijuana that they do have. they got sativa and indica, and then they label the THC potency on them. And I was looking at this Aurora THC drops. That's some strong stuff right there. $95 a price for it for 25 milligrams right there of THC. So that's powerful stuff. Now let's get to the chart. ACB, We, as Miss Vegas has said before, Nelson Pelps is uh, the the new person on the board and he's, he's a real happy billionaire. I like him a lot. We did have a high off that news of 1038 and we have consolidated back in about a two week period now to find a support right at 865 with a low support of 857 somewhere in that vicinity where that red line is drawn on this 20-day chart I'm gonna pull up the one year just to have you look at the one year real fast we did have a high on the one year so that's my target price for this trade up here at 1253 I do believe we can get up there and break this I also believe that this stock is very undervalued and let me repeat undervalued so we've been up in a channel here for the last four months with a low down here at right under 450, 460. And she's had her three different tops on the way up in this channel. The last top we had was right around 1024, so that's going to be our target price. But actually, if we can hit this channel again, it's going to go a little bit higher to right around 1050, 1055. We did have a spinning top here on the last two days ago, last Thursday. With that spinning top, we did gain another nice little candle off the 20 SMA on the yearly chart popped right up on it had a high that day of of 918 and has pulled back since so let's pull it up to the daily three minute I'm gonna just kinda recognize see if I missed anything in support levels I do kinda see something right down here right around under nine dollars but I do have a low support of 881 for an entry if you see that that's gonna be a real strong buy we do have a double top here right under nine dollars at that 897 area but nine dollars is going to be your first support and if it goes below that it's going to be a strong buy you're able you're pleased to go ahead and stop this video at any time copy and paste these charts for your own personal reference for supports and resistances and pivot points so Friday we had a high up here at 920 I sold my options I made sixty five dollars on this trade I had five contracts and I'm gonna get back in it because I'm kind of more or less and this was a swing option it wasn't a scalp but once I saw that profit you know I went ahead and took it and I'm gonna wait back until Monday if we get another pullback to this nine dollar area I'll be looking at them again I'll also will scalp it I've been scalping it all the way up and I also will swing trade it for a long position so I have three different options to play with this stock and that's kinda of how I trade I, 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 I let the market dictate how I'm gonna trade that day you know, if it's a red day, I know I'm going to be scalping a lot because I'm going to be playing the pullbacks. And when there's a red day, I'm always green 99% of the time. So let's go ahead. We're going to have a resistance level we got to break at 920. And we got a target up, up around 1050 for this ACB trade right now. Pullback support for a low, 881, 890, somewhere in these three different support levels under 9 bucks, And that's ACB. The next one we're going to talk about is AEZS. ZS, as Vegas would say. Is it ZS or ZS? It's ZS when you talk about it. <laughs> the Canadians understand what I'm saying, okay? Yep. Um, so this is called Eterna Zenteris Inc. And um, I did mention this stock actually on Friday in our chat room. And the reason I liked the stock was the fact that it was going into a 52-week high. And I really like the direction of this, uh, the actual chart. Uh, you know, this company uh, focuses on endocrine diseases. And they look to acquire, develop, and license what they call orphan products. And, um, you know, they, I like their, you know, their, their vision and I like the products that they have. The, the main product that they have right now 
is, uh, you know, I don't, they're looking to focus on people that have endocrine diseases. And they have this product called Massey Morlin, and it's an oral growth hormone. Um, and uh, it helps the development strategy to look at how they can help with uh, pituitary centers, look at doing some research and practicing endocrinologists and nursing practitioners um, on the use of this drug. So this Massey Morlin, what it does, it stimulates the secretion of growth hormones from the pituitary gland into the cir circulatory system. So that's really the one that they are working on and they have this in clinical trials. Um, so I do like this chart. I like the way it's moving nice and slow. Um, I think that, uh, that we can expect a continuation of the stock. And I kind of like, you know, it's moving, you know, like I said, nice and slow. And I like that because this to me is going to be stress-free and just trade the channel that it's in. Um, they also did mention that they did have their fourth quarter financial operating results. So the earnings are basically out of the way. And um, that's good news there as well. And uh, the total revenue for Q4 of 2018 was 1.4 million versus 0 0.2 from the year before. Um, so they did have a consolidated net income of 4.2 compared to a net loss of 16.8. So I think that's really a big improvement uh, for the company. Um, so I think, you know, now that earnings is out of the way, uh, we could see some movement in the stock and uh, it looks like it's reacting also to that news. So Jim, over to you on that chart because it's looking pretty good to me. I've been watching this stock for over over 15 years. It was one mm -hmm. of the first trades I ever looked at. So we have had a real nice run from this trade back down here on, on the date of 10-31-2018. Uh, we had a huge breakout, and then she ran up all the way up to a resistance level of approximately 390, 392. Now that's going to be our pullback support. We do have a channel here at 350, right there on the 100 SMA. We did have a beautiful breakout. We had a triple top, broke the triple top, pulled back, hit that 20 SMA. The 20 is starting to curl up, which is a positive momentum sign right here on the on the, on the one year daily. And I always look at the one year daily to figure out if I like the trade or not. You can tell I like it right now, back from uh, October. All the way up to right now we've had a nice couple of nice little pullbacks to this 350 area and she's bounced up to three times off that area so we do have a resistance right now we need to break and that's going to be this 465 we did have a 471 high friday on the trade i'm going to pull up and now that i'm drawing these trend lines you can see all these yellow ones were when i played it last year and all these blue ones are when i'm starting to play it this year I change my colors on my trend lines each year. So basically, let's look at the uh, 20 day. After we've looked at the year, we've got a couple support channels here. We've got a 439. we got another one right here at 441. So that's not much of a spread right there. Then we have another support level right here, right around 454, which is a real powerful engine. So we have a resistance after hours. It did take up after hours. We had closed at 465. We hit a high of 477, so the stock's still bullish, still very bullish. So I'm going to call a low support right here at 454. I'd hate to see that break. If that breaks, then we're going to go down to this 439 for a strong buy. 439 to 4, and then I'm going to go right in here. I just now noticed this breakout over here. It didn't hold very well. You know, it broke out, and this was back on 312. 19 so it must have had some kind of news or something to make that stock run up like that and we did have a high at 485 so that's the, our next resistance we got to get to you see how i did that on this one year uh breakout i went to that previous high we had right here and i've created a resistance line right there of 485 and i'm going to create a support level right here at the base of this candle right here at 451 and you notice here on the left or on the right, where that candle right after hours hit that 451. So that created a solid support. So let's see if this thing, if it pulls back, we're going to make our first support in this channel of 451 to 454. 
The second one's going to be 439 to 4, 4, uh, 441. And then strong low support is going to be right here at the 428 level. So you're able to stop this chart at any time, and copy and paste it, and use it for your own personal reference. And I'm going to look at one more item on this, and that's going to be the three-year. We're way past the three-year highs. Beautiful. Just loving this trade. AEZS, it's about time it started doing something. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be BDSI. So I'm going to talk about BDSI in one sec, but I do. I forgot to mention about okay. AEZS. Yeah. Um, that they did uh, put together a what they call a special committee. And what they've done is they actually hired um, a company called Toria, which is a global investment bank, which uh, specializes in uh, life sciences. And they uh, hired them as their financial advisor. And what they're going to be doing in the special committee, they're going to work with the board of directors and they're going to look at a wide range of transactions. They're going to see if there's any opportunities for the license of this Massey Moreland outside of the U.S. and outside of Canada. Oh. And they're also going to be looking at monetization transactions relating to this drug or, guess what, what? potential sale of the company. Oh. <gasps> oh, my God. Which might create value for the company and shareholders. Now, I do want to say, I have to disclose this, okay, because this is on their PR from before that there is no defined timeline for the strategic review. And, you know, when companies do a strategic review, let's be very clear. There is no guaranteed outcome and sometimes no outcome and no assurances that there will be any specific action or transaction. And they will not be making any further announcements or comments regarding its review of strategic alternatives. So that's interesting to know. Because if this company is looking outside to do something, you know, sometimes with these biotechs, let me tell you, if they're really good and they can connect with another big, big farm company, they could eventually, you know, maybe get a partnership or a, a buyout or something. So again, nothing's guaranteed, but they are looking outside for some strategic partnerships or what they call alternatives. So that's a good sign that the company's done this. And we'll see if there's anything materializes, but they will not be talking about this anymore unless there's some news to, to obviously release to the public. Yeah, ain't she great? Great follow up there, Miss Vegas. Yeah, well, you know, I just forgot to um, mention that there. So I just thought, you know, keep this in mind. Uh, keep or keep your eyes on <laughs> AEZS because who knows what they could surprise us with if anything does materialize. But again, no guarantees. And, of course, every company is going to say there's no guarantees because there isn't. Maybe nobody wants to partner with them. Maybe their product sucks. Like, who knows? So um, now we're going to talk about BDSI. So we've talked about BDSI. And uh, BDSI is Bio Delivery Sciences. Now, I, gotta, I love their website. Um, and they're working on a few different drugs. They have a drug here for... Um, I think they have different ones, one for cancer, uh, one for chronic pain, and they also have another one. Uh, let's see here. I just wanted to see this other one here. But chronic pain is very important, uh, a big one for a lot of people. Um, that's very important. And it's looking for an opioid to exert the effects uh, binding to opioid receptors. So... Um, this is an interesting one, too. I do like BDSI. And the reason I picked this chart here in particular, because of the fact that it's a new 52-week high. And, you know, I was reading about what the company does, and they really do specialize in pain and addiction. And I really like that because there are so many people that are in pain. And, uh, you know, I'd love to see a company like this um, be able to commercialize either through a partnership or a third party uh you know, some sort of new drug um, that they can get approved by the FDA. So I do like the uh, chart, looking definitely for some continuation as well. Um, they also did already have their earnings. Their earnings is out of the way. And um, they did mention that they are going to be cash flow positive. They're going to become cash flow positive in 2019. So that's a good sign for these, you know, biotech companies. It's very hard 
to always be cash flow positive when you're doing so many phase two clinical trials. Um, but definitely um, the earnings is done and uh, looks like, again, the market is happy with the cash position. I will say this, the cash position as of December 31st, this was cash and cash equivalents of approximately $43.8 million. And this was based on current guidance and the company anticipates turning operating cash flow positive in this 2019. So that's really good to hear. And it'll be nice to see if that happens when we see the next earnings come out uh, in the next quarter. So good job to BDSI. And that chart's looking good to me. Jim, what do you think is going well, on there? This is one of the sorriest golden crosses I ever saw. It says here that drugs now kill more people than car accidents. And back in about 2008, 2009, the, uh, a drug overdose is lapped over the car accident so in that kind of golden cross that's not too golden but uh we're going to look at the chart now and that's what i like about this company is they're trying to fight that addiction so here we are we're, we have a double top that i see here on the yearly chart let me pull this up that's the three year so three year high you can see it right now we're at a three year high and i'm going to pull up the one year we have a double top working. We pulled back to support level right here at $5, and she bounced up. Now she's got a resistance of a double top right at 537. And I'm going to draw that trend line in there, 536. That's what I want to see it break. If we break that 536, we're moving on up. If not, we'll pull back to support level. And that support level could be the previous high right here at 512. And if it hits that 512, we're going to go up and break the triple top. But I noticed the last base of this last candle on a yearly chart was higher than the, the previous high, which was right around 526. This one's at 529. That's a positive outlook. We do have all the moving averages in the right position. If we come down and we do hit that 58 at 50, that's going to be a real strong buy on the yearly daily chart. So let's pull up the 20 day. Let's take a look at it and see if I missed anything. It sure, I could say maybe I'll put a trend line right in here at 506. Yeah, I see a little touch up here at 506. I see this. A little touch down, kind of, you know, kind of a low support level. But we had a nice little breakout on this stock from 510 to 537 Friday. We This is uh, based on an hours, hours daily. On a daily 20, 20 day a 20 day hour chart and we did have a low right around that 509 and she's bounced up then she pulled back a little bit after hours so she didn't want to try to break that double top area that I'm seeing right here at 536 she might pull back a little bit and I'm gonna say your first solid supports gonna be right here I mean no lower than this 519 and I'm gonna change that into a red line because that's gonna notify me when it's and I'm going to set me an alert. That's what you can do on the Thinkorswim platform. 520, 519. So I'm going to set it at 520 at the ask and below. And I'm going to create me in a little alert to get in this trade. But we've got three different support levels. We are at 530 after hours. Let me pull up the daily one minute, three minute. She did pull back right here to 529. Do I see anything I want to add on here? No, I don't. But I do see a resistance level now at the 535. So I'm changing my, my 536 to a 535 breakout. And if it pulls back, it might hit any one of these three moving averages. And I'm going to change it to a one minute. The averages change. We did pull back to the 20. So I think she's ready to bounce. The only thing I see negative right now is this 20 bouncing down. So maybe come Monday morning, it might kind of curve up a little bit. It could pull back down a little bit more during that process, but if this 20-day starts to curve back up, then that's going to be it. We're going to get us our 535 breakout, and there's our lovely dog Gucci or Miss Vegas's dog Gucci. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to have, like we said, this is a 52-week high with a resistance breakout of 535, with a pullback support right at the 519 area, and I set my alert at 520. And that's going to be BDSI, and we're very bullish on this stock right now. 
INFU is going to be the next one we're going to talk about. Yeah, so INFU system. You know what? This stock, if those of you that follow and subscribe, and we appreciate that you do, this is the company that I talked about last week, and I did say that this is on a nice channel, uh, that it was making new 52-week highs, and that it was definitely going to be going for continuation. And for those of you that did listen, and, you know, you don't have to trade anything we talk about, but it's good. To, I like to actually sometimes, even though I'm not in a trade, when someone talks about a trading idea, because people share ideas with each other as traders, we always sh exchanging ideas. Um, even though sometimes I may not take the trade, I usually like to write down the ticker and write down the price of what the stock is currently at right now. And then interestingly, sometimes if I'm not sure if there's going to be a continuation or not, or maybe there is, and I'm going to look to get into a trade, but I want to get in a, a certain price. I'm amazed to like keep looking at it and following up just to see the performance of the stock. And let me tell you, this was a really good one because we talked about this uh, last Sunday. And at the time, uh, the stock had closed on the Friday at 468. And then on the 25th of March, it opened up at 468. The stock, you know, pretty much had stayed around the same. It pulled back a little and went up to 468 and, and you know, it closed around 456. But look where the stock is now. I mean, it ran all the way up to 520 on Friday. And considering the, you know, the, the markets, how they've been behaving, um, I mean, this is a good one to, let's say, swing traded or keep a watch for a move, even if you were waiting for this to move to a certain number. I mean, once this broke even $4.80, the stock has done very well. It went all the way to 520 on Friday. It did close at 501. And um, the volume is low. So, you know, there could have been profit takers depending where they got in the stock. However, I'm still bullish on the stock. I mean, this company, as I mentioned, um, INFU, um, you know, they're into those, um, you know, the people that have to rent a pump or purchase a pump. These are people who have to get infusions done and, um, you know, for the oncolo oncology sector. And um, so I did talk about that. And you know what? Interestingly, the stock's doing quite well. So um, I think if you're not in it, it's fine. You don't have to be in anything that we talk about, like as I said, but definitely keep it on watch because, you know, sometimes day trading is not for everybody. Not everyone trades full time. And so swing trades to me are an excellent, excellent opportunity to still work full time and still try to make money in stock market. So Jim, let's talk about this INFU is looking pretty nice. Yeah, this is another one that, that, that helps your nerve blocks to reduce in de dependence on opium, opioid pain medication, which I like on this FU block system they have. So that's pretty interesting. So let's take it to the chart. Miss Vegas mentioned this last Sunday in our report. And she's bounced up from this low support down here of four bucks all the way up to about five fourteen. This is what we would call an uncrowded trade, which you know it doesn't have a lot of volume, but it does have a lot of move upwards. And we hit a double top area right here at five fourteen area here on Thursday and Friday, and both days it did kind of pull back to support level at five dollars, with a low support right at around four ninety five which I can see from this previous high we had on the base of this candle on Wednesday. So, yeah, this is one we want to keep on watch. I think it's creating a new channel. And if it can hold this channel, we're going to have a triple top breakout if it's not Monday or this coming week. And let me pull up the one-year chart just to have a good look at it. This is one that I think I've played, but watched before and maybe played before. No, I don't think so. I'm wondering where these red lines come in, though. Maybe they were at support levels or something. So let me pull up a three-year real fast. Nope, three-year high was uh, right 360. We had a triple top breakout on that 360 area. She did pull back to the 20, and then she had a nice trend line run up all the way up to that 418. Pulled back, bam. Last two days, last two weeks, she's run up from the 428 area all the way up to 521. So that's a beautiful almost a dollar gain right there. Let's pull up the 20 day one more time, take a look at it. I don't think I missed anything looking at the chart. So I'm going to go to the minute, daily three minute. We do have a consolidated channel right here. Support level right at five bucks after hours. 
it can pull back maybe to this 492 area but this is one that you want to keep on watch let's take it to the daily one minute same thing like I said uncrowded so I think we're in a channel and the channel we got to break is this 514 area let me have one more look at the 20 day yeah 514 triple top breakout and then we're going to have a resistance at 520 from 514 and then she's off to new 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 highs and this is a Infu, a n f u and this was a good call by um, our youtube channel and miss vegas she's the one that brought it up and so it would be nice to pay attention to some of these calls keep a good eye on them and the next one we're going to look at is going to be q t n a well you know q t n a i always say is my cutie and you know what that is a cutie because qtna we also talked about earlier in the month and uh you know we talked about the stock when it was 20 dollars around that range i have it written down here and uh, one of the things that was very nice about qtna is that there was news and they're going to be acquired by a semiconductor company called on and on is called on <laughs> <laughs> ON Semiconductor on. Company. ON. I guess they're called ON. Um, ON Semiconductor Corporation. This is an all cash deal of twenty four fifty per share. And what's going to happen is this will strengthen the acquirer's portfolio. Um, this is about $1.07 billion. Um, and they're going to be, after taking into account their net cash of roughly $136 million by the end of the quarter. So there are some closing conditions, which are customary. Uh, however, uh, ON on semiconductors is expected to fund this deal. And this deal is going to actually close by the end of the second quarter. And we believe that um, Quantina is going to actually benefit from this acquisition of on semiconductors. And, um, you know, the um, even the... Uh, president of the company was happy to conclude that this is a really good acquisition and very positive move for Quantina. So Quantina, uh, the news was released last week and then boom, the stock moved nicely. And uh, you guys can see that move from the news. And uh, I think that uh, this has room to probably even do a little more. So I'd like to hear Jim, your thoughts on Quantina because this thing is a little cutie. Yeah, it's a little cutie, all right, with a huge gap up. Mm -hmm. With a huge gap up. I mean, it started gapping up off the news that came out on Wednesday evening. It's 2440. Yeah, yeah and had a, had a top at high of that day at 2445. And she finally found a little channel right in here between the 2395 area with a low support right here at 2384. So this is one that I'll be watching next week. We're going to look at the year's chart. You do see the gap up where it broke out from the 20-day the high of 2161. So I'm going to pull up a yearly chart on this thing. Yep, I see pretty good-looking pattern here. She did have a low back here about four months ago down at 1326. So this stock's almost up 100, more than almost 100%, 80% or so just by looking at it. Off the top of my head, I'm going to pull up a three-year. Ah, now we're starting to get into something here. Three-year high on this chart is right around this 2460. So that's the resistance, and when we had a 2545. So I'm just using this as a as history reference for maybe a new resistance level at the 2545. And we do have a couple places I can draw a support line in here, one at the 2347 and then I put another one right here off this candlestick wick right here right around 23 and I see a low low support maybe at 22 we have a couple more here we can throw in bam and bam with another bam right there so let's pull up now that's the three years chart so that's the three year high and you see how wonderful it ran back from that same support level down here at, at 1326 from and there that support back then was right around the 1381 area 
so she had a nice run and then we had a little pivot point right here so that's all nonsense right now let's go ahead and pull up the 20 now I get a better look at it I've got a couple low supports if it does break this channel of 2384 would would be in in between this guideline right here please stop this and, and copy and paste this chart for future reference but this is one that I'm going to be watching next week just because it had that huge breakout I want to see if it holds this channel and breaks on up if not it can pull back and this would be a good dead cat bounce play for you if they did does decide to pull back because it had such a huge gap up um, really all the way down here from twenty dollars all the way up to twenty four forty five but the previous double top was right around this twenty one sixty one area so I'm going I've got these all set and if I'm gonna be watching it and if I see the price action start to move up on a pullback I'm gonna get in it and scalp it this is QTNA this is gonna be a scalper play and a dead cat bounce play for me and the next one we're going to talk about is uh, something that we're going to learn something about. And this is called Soli. Okay. So Soli. You know, Soli is, um, you know, they have, they have this uh, product that does um, rapid, uh, it's, it's kind of like a rapid time. And it's, you know, for, it's a medical appliance and a very interesting company because they were what they call a reg a ipo and what is a reg a ipo so not everyone may be familiar with this so i just want to explain it very briefly so this is called the reg a plus ipo and it's a stock that trades on the nasdaq with the ticker called s-o-l-y uh you know just to let you know Soli has been in the business since 2012 and um they have a lot of proprietary technology that's actually licensed from the university of texas um and uh, their product that they have is focused on removing of tattoos with a proprietary shockwave technology. So um, they got uh, the opportunity to get listed uh, through what they call a Reg A plus IPO. And what it does, uh, a Reg A plus IPO really allows, let's say, smaller companies uh, to get listed on NASDAQ. And uh, this is really good because it helps smaller companies uh, meet certain requirements uh, with the Securities Commission that normally, you know, a company this size wouldn't be able to meet. And uh, because they're able to offer Regulation A plus uh, offerings for an IPO, it, it goes through a bit of a, a lot of a different, a different process. And um, this is really good news. A lot of companies, believe it or not, um, go through what they call Reg A plus listings. And some of the ones that we know are like Adomani, like ADOM, uh, Shift Pixie has gone through it, Fat Brands has gone through it, and now we have Soli Tron. So, uh, Soli Tron, sorry. So, I am waiting for them to get approval on the FDA uh, platform for this uh, product called the Rapid Acoustic Pulse Device. This is called the RAP. And what it does, is um, it works, it's used in conjunction with lasers that actually accelerates the process of tattoo removal. And they have found from clinical trials um, that this device can actually help remove tattoos sometimes within three to four sessions or currently with what's out there right now with the laser removal, it can sometimes take 10 sessions so this is actually very good news. They did submit this to the FDA uh, and they're waiting for the clearance to market the device. I'm thinking by mid 2019. So we should probably hear in the next three months some news if the FDA has approved this to be the first device to be marketed in the market for tattoo removal. And uh, this will be exciting because, you know, some people have had really bad tattoos <laughs> that were not looking very pretty and they'd love to get rid of them. But, you know, to have to go to a tattoo parlor 10 different times with people's busy schedules, um, that's a lot. But to know that I could just go three times or maybe four and my tattoo's gone, that's amazing. Like, I'd love it. So I personally don't have any tattoos, but... Um, whoever does and they want to get rid of them. I mean, this is amazing to hear that this technology is coming out 
So I hope that this gets approved by the FDA and we should hopefully hear something in the next three months or less. So we're basically April. So let's just say by maybe by June or sooner, we should hear positive news. So I think Soli should be on everyone's watch. Um, and this has a good future. I mean, the stock has practically doubled since it's gone on this Reg A plus IPO. And that is an amazing, amazing. And I wish I would have caught this when it first came out. I didn't actually start paying attention to this stock, to be honest, until like last week. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, we missed a big move on this one. So I got to pay more attention to these Reg A plus IPOs because a lot of them have a lot of potential. And this is just a prime example of how this really has done very well. So again, over to Jim now on the, on the chart, but uh, don't take your eyes off solely. Over 70 million Americans have at least one tattoo and over half of them are considering a removal. So it does have the marketplace in Vegas. If I tattooed a I Love Stocks tattoo on my forehead, would you pay me some advertisement? Sure. Okay. Well, I might get one. So let's talk about um, Soli. I'm going to put it on the chart here. We've had a nice double top right here on the 20 day chart. Let me pull up the yearly. I like this stock myself. I think it's really going to go a lot of places. We do have some a nice little pullback on Soli at 669. Here a couple days ago and she's bounced up back to that that double top area we had a resistance right here at around uh, 796 798 dollars and then she had a daily high right here at 852 and it's pulled back all the way to 810 almost back to that previous high we had back here uh, last week so let's pull up the day the 20 minute or the daily tw one hour we have the double top breakout the one that I mentioned earlier here at 820 I mean, double top, we have an ascending triangle that came out on Friday on it. You can see it coming up from here. This is one of my favorite chart patterns. I like to see this 810 hold and break on up to that 851 area. And that's a nice little 40 cent bounce right there. If it pulls back, there's a support right here at 770. See me draw that in there on this one hour. Draw the little trend line right there. So let's pull up, and I think I've got it pretty well patterned out. Let's look at the daily three minute. We have pretty one. Well, once it hit the daily high up here, right around that that 438, after the big breakout of 852, she did pull back, pulled back to support level right here at, at 796. So that's where we're going to call our first support, 796. So I'm going to change that into a red line. Bam, simple. And then we have the first one, the second one, and then this third lower channel support right around the 830 area where she broke out on Friday after Friday morning. And then she just ran all the way up, created a little resistance right here, I would say in between this 738, and we're going to call it exactly right at 733. So we got pullback support at 796. If that doesn't hold, go to the 770, and I think that will hold. And 749 is your low support with a resistance breakout of 851. I mean, with a resistance breakout of 833, all the way up to the to the daily high we had Friday at 852, 851 area. And this is a company that I, I really admire because I do know a lot of people that talk about their tattoos and want to get rid of rid of them. So you know, they've always said, don't try to tattoo your girlfriend's name on there because. You don't know how long that relationship will last and you would want to get rid of it and even wrote a song about that and so here we are we're at 851 852 breakout and that's going to be s-o-l-y solely and we got a couple more left i think miss vegas had one more she wanted to talk about and that was lift yeah so you know lift ipo i mean everybody was you know watching po and everybody was, you know, so excited about, you know, what is going on with this stock. Oh, and, you know, gung-ho to buy the stock. And you know what? Uh, I think it's, I mean, I didn't touch the stock, not for this kind of a price. 
No. Uh, and for anyone that likes to trade options, because you guys know when a stock's really expensive, I like to go the option route. Um, there is no options available for at least three months. Um, but anyhow, Lyft is um, quite interesting. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they did go they did go public. And um, what an interesting price. I mean, they did have uh, the stock traded as high as $87 after an IPO price of $72. Um, it closed up with a more modest for an IPO gain of 8.7%. I think it closed, Jim, was it closed at 78.29? Um, yes. Okay. So can you imagine like someone that bought the stock at 87 bucks and now it's 78.29? You know what? Longer, longer, longer term. It closed at 71.06. What did it close at? 71.06. Ooh, that's nasty. Yep. So, you know what, I actually feel bad if anyone did buy the stock at the high there, uh, or oh, even in the high 80s. That's the wrong one. Um, because now, you know, that's quite the loss. And, I mean, you know, there's a lot of people sometimes like, oh, my God, i got to get the stock, i got to get the stock. And look what happened. I mean, they bought it at the high, and now it's down basically almost $10 a share. Not to say it can't rebound. Oh. It, it might. Uh, but Jim has a different perspective on how he's seeing this particular chart. Um What's the ticker's you know, name? L Y F T. Oh, okay. That's Never mind. I thought, like the name of the company. I, thought, I might have been wrong on that. L Y F T. No, no, it has gone down. It's down to it closed. I have here seventy seven twenty. Yeah, it closed at seventy eight twenty nine, and yeah, okay. Okay, after hours maybe. Yeah. Or low of the day seventy seven twenty two. Yeah. So, you know, this company, um, I don't really have anything amazing to say about it. I mean. Uh, you know, they do plan to have um, a very interesting business model. Um, again, they went IPO before um, Uber, because we know Uber is, is coming on board. But, you know, I do got to say, I really like the story behind Lyft uh, about the two guys that started the company. And, you know, that they met through their mutual friend that introduced them through Facebook. And uh, the two of them uh, lived together in uh, silicon valley for three years it didn't take one dollar from the company just to get it off the ground and get it going so it's a really nice success story from let's say two founders very young 35 years old that started this business and look where they are today where they went ipo um does the stock have an opportunity to move remains to be seen so jim let's talk about this chart because uh maybe there are some people that are in it and stuck in a trade or maybe they're not in it and they're keeping it on watch. So what are your thoughts on this one? My personal thoughts on this one, that it's way overpriced, definitely. I think they overpriced the IPO by far. But, um, you know, I got a target for $50, just in a mental support level. And if I see that 50, that's when I'm going to start really getting interested in this trade. But I'm going to be watching it because, you know, it's new to, the, to Wall Street. It came out Friday and... I always watch the IPOs and see how they run. And so we had did have a low support down here after hours at right around. We had a couple of them, but we did have a low support at 77.17. I still think this thing can fall down a little bit more. I'm going to give it about a week before I decide to trade it or even look at it for a trade. We do have a resistance level from this low support at 88.08 by looking at the chart. And then I have another one right here at approximately 81.35. And I think if they were to price this at a lower IP, lower IPO price, this stock would have been a, a good runner to move up. But instead, it was overpriced, so all it could do was just go down. And I do believe $50 is my target for support level. If I do see that $50, i am going to be very interested in buying this trade. And I'm drawing me a couple trend lines as I'm watching it here. We did have a little move up from that 7740 area right after hours up to 7828. So we got a little channel going on here. And uh, this is going to be an interesting uh, chart to watch and to learn from. And I'm drawing these little resistance lines on the way up. Because, you know, the fat cats are really going to be watching this stock because they're heavily invested in it at this higher IPO price. And they're going to probably cost average down and probably pick up more and buy more when it pulls back. But I think they'll give this thing a week to rest, one week, 
and then maybe by the middle of the week to Friday they'll start buying back in it and raising this price back up but we do have a resistance here at $80 8808 we have a channel created after hours between 7740 and 7828 and I I'm just guessing that this is going to pull back more and low 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 support will be down to 50 and that's just a guess I mean don't please don't take me take it with a grain of salt but I've just I've been in this market for 15 years and the first thing I spotted was this this IPO was way overpriced and this is LYFT and congratulations to the two gentlemen that did get this off and running and finally brought it into the market and I think they did a good idea by bringing it to the market and so it's gonna be lift LYFT and that concludes our aftermarket report for today and Miss Vegas will have a few more things to say yes I just want to thank everyone sorry that behind. so busy with uh, getting things done and uh, we'll be back on track with our market report so thanks for being patient and following and please share the market reports with other people uh, you're welcome again to come by the room we have the uh, two-week free trial and for the ladies out there I have the one month trial for any month you choose for the year so uh, if you're interested just message me and uh, happy to see new people come by and you know again like i've said before you don't have to join after the trial you can just come and learn and that's all that's all we care about so we're happy to see you happy to welcome you please come please follow we also have a new facebook page um so i'll put the link for the facebook page um because i will be looking to update some information on there and i will be putting announcing a couple events um that we'll be having as well so be sure to follow us on facebook and uh, you can interact with us in real time during the day. So if you're not in our room, you can connect with us on Facebook. And I will put the link in our video. So we look forward to meeting you on Facebook. So thank you, everyone. And have an amazing weekend, whatever's left. And uh, hopefully we'll have a great trading day tomorrow. It's April 1st. And you know what? Don't be fooled by the markets. And we do have a link to, uh, to Facebook on our I Love Stocks uh, website, too. So you can go to the right and hit that link that big F right there and it'll bring you straight we have a YouTube link Pintergeist we have stock twits link and we have a couple others up here we have our you know if you want to ever write to us you have please feel free to do that and we do love people coming to our chat room and enjoying the two-week free trial that we do we are set to help beginners we do uh, try to teach options we do have I'm a scalper in the daytime it depends on the market I also swing trade and I also am learning options myself so it, it's been every every day is a new day for me and last Friday when this market was down 460 points I said don't worry about it this market's going to rebound and the spy did that it did rebound to back to the top high again and we called last week almost perfect all week long with the spy and 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 other trades we do call out breakouts we also have a scanner trade idea scanner that we share and we also have an options scanner that we share in the room too so please feel free to come into our into our room and uh, let us know that you're in there and we'll welcome you with open arms we always leave the light on for you and it's two weeks and this is I love stocks the aftermarket report Sunday's edition which is always a little longer and today's date is March 31st, 2019, and the market opens up on April Fool's. So it's going to be a fun day next, going to be a fun week next week. And this is it. I love stocks.